Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. In this video, we're going to work on how we can understand the derivative of an inverse function. So, if you've been learning your derivatives, chances are you've seen lots of different formulas, then all of a sudden you come across this guy, which is supposed to tell us uh, how we take the derivative when we have an inverse. Of course, the only problem is, what exactly is going on here and why does it look so complicated? Well, you'll see that uh, it's actually not too complicated. In fact, it's rather intuitive, but you have to see exactly what it's talking about. So, rather than look at the formula, we're going to look at this guy. So, the idea here is that uh, we want to know what the derivative of an inverse is, but in order to help us out, we're actually going to look at the original function to do that. So, here I have the original function. Uh, let's go ahead and draw the inverse in as well, just so that we can see them both. So, one key thing with drawing the inverse is you want to remember that it's reflected over the y equals x line. Let's go ahead and add that line to this. So that's the nice diagonal line that we have across here. So every single point on the original function will be reflected over this line. So if I have the point uh, 1, 0 here, then 0, 1 is going to be on my inverse. This is 3, 1, so I'd have uh, 1, 3. Uh, this is about 5 and 3 and a half. So then I'd have about three and a half and five, and, and all the way up the line. So I'm just gonna eyeball this thing in here. And that's kind of what the inverse function looks like. Okay, so again, what we're really interested in is trying to figure out what is the derivative on my inverse at say some random point. Let's go ahead and put this one at one three. Now, since we're talking about derivatives, what we're really thinking about is the slope of a tangent line right at that point. Now, that's kind of a mystery, but we can use this original function to help us out. And the reason why we can use it to help us out is because every point on our inverse corresponds to some sort of point on the original function. For example, if I'm really interested at 1, 3 and what its derivative is, then I can look at the corresponding point 3, 1, on the original and simply find what the derivative is doing there. Now these derivatives uh, usually are not the same, they might be, but usually they're not, but they are related to one another. And here's the relation. Whatever derivative is on the inverse, the reciprocal of that will be the derivative on the corresponding point for the original. So let's say that this derivative over here happened to be, uh, let's say, one-third that's the slope of that line, then over here the derivative or its slope would simply be the reciprocal or 3. So again the key really for figuring out derivatives on the inverse is to check out the original function and what its derivative is at that corresponding point. In fact let's go ahead and make that a little bit more precise and go ahead and list out exactly what this formula is telling us. So here's what we get from the formula. If you want to find the derivative of the inverse of a function at some point, let's call this point BA, then you really need to do three things. That's what this thing over here is telling us. First, you want to figure out what is the corresponding point on the original function. So if I'm looking at the inverse at some point BA, then the corresponding point on the original is going to be AB. The two points are reversed. Now, once I have that point, then you want to go ahead and find the derivative of the original function at that point. It's not too bad. In fact, usually we know a little bit more about that original function. Once we know the derivative of the original at our point AB, then we'll simply take its reciprocal and that'll be the derivative that we're after. Now, we're going to give this a try with uh, a function that you should be familiar with already. Uh, we'll find its derivative two different ways. We'll find it just the regular old power rule way, and we'll go ahead and use this inverse formula to see how it's uh, playing a part. Then, of course, we'll take a look at uh, a very special way that you can view the derivative of the natural log function. So let's go ahead and start off with this guy. Our goal here is to find the derivative of y equals the square root of x at x equals 2. Now, I'm going to pretend for a bit I, I've never seen that inverse formula, and I'm just going to do it uh, using a regular old power rule. So first I would imagine that I have uh, my square root function written as x to the 1 half power. That way I can just take care of it a little bit easier. The derivative of this thing, I'd go ahead and bring down the power. So I'd put the 1 half out front, and then I'd reduce the power by 1. So let's see, 1 half minus 1. 
So that would give me that the derivative of this function is 1 half x to the negative 1 half. And maybe a better way to write that uh, back into terms of square roots is this is 1 over 2, so there's our 1 half from the front. Uh, this is the square root of x since it's to the 1 half power, and it's in the bottom because it's a negative 1 half. So here I have the derivative of you know just my original function. If I take this derivative and now evaluate it at 2, I get 1 divided by 2, the square root of 2. Okay, so here is the derivative that I'm after. Now, an alternate way that we can find this is really think of our function as some sort of inverse to an original function, and then go ahead and find the derivative of that original, you know, go from there. So let's run through those three steps. Let's review them real quick. So we're interested in some sort of point uh, uh, BA on our square root function. We're going to find the corresponding point AB on its original. Then we'll go ahead and take the derivative of the original function at AB, take its reciprocal, uh, and go ahead and plug in our point AB. All right. So first of all, I'm going to pretend that this is some sort of inverse function. I'm curious what its derivative is at 2. Now, of course, this has some sort of corresponding point on the original function, uh, so I need to find the original function, and I need to find out what my y-coordinate is. Uh, so if we were to plug 2 into this, I would simply get the square root of 2 right back out. This can be considered the inverse of x squared, as long as I'm dealing with just positive values. And of course, the corresponding point just has these two guys flipped around. So now that I have the corresponding point, I have the original function. Now all we need to do is take the derivative of the original, plug in the square root of 2, and then take its reciprocal. Let's give that a try. So I'm going to take my uh, original function here and take its derivative. Of course, it's a lot easier to take this guy's derivative. No fractions to worry about. We simply bring down the 2. Reduce it by a power of 1, so 2 minus 1 equals 1. That's good. And now we're going to plug in this square root of 2. So I get 2 times the square root of 2. That is the derivative uh, on the original function at the square root of 2, 2. Now there's one last step to this, and it's simply to take the reciprocal. So if we take the reciprocal of this derivative, we get 1 divided by 2 all over the square root of 2 which sure enough matches exactly with what we had before. And it shows that this formula for finding the derivative of the inverse is nice and consistent with all the rest of our rules. It doesn't necessarily violate anything. All right, now the really important part about uh, knowing why this formula works is so that you can find derivatives of some more complicated functions. Let's do it for finding the derivative of natural log of x. And just like before, we'll think about the original function. We'll think about points on the original function and take its derivative instead so that we can look at its reciprocal. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So you may know that the derivative of natural log of x, as long as you're dealing with just positive x's, is 1 divided by x. But you know, why does it turn out to be that way? So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to imagine that uh, my natural log here is the inverse function. And it is an inverse function, it really is. And if I were to plug in just some random x into this function, what I would expect to get out is the natural log of x. So this is like my point BA that we've been dealing with. All right, so what exactly is natural log the inverse of? Well, it happens to be the inverse of e to the x. So I'll consider that my original function. And the corresponding points that we're interested in would just have these two guys flipped around, natural log of x and x. So I have the corresponding points. I have the original function. Now all we need to do is find the derivative of the original function evaluated at this new flipped around point, and that'll be uh, pretty much the way there. Then, we'll, of course, we'll have to take its reciprocal. So on we go. So if I want to know the derivative of natural log, uh, let's go ahead and find the derivative of the original function. So the derivative of e to the x is a really nice one. Of course, it's just e to the x. We'll take the derivative of e to the x and we'll evaluate it at natural log. So I'll take my e to the x, I'll plug in my natural log, 
And of course, the e to the natural log will cancel. And now I'm just left with x. So that's almost my derivative. Just one last step. I need to take the reciprocal of this, and then we're good. So this gives us the formula for the derivative of natural log. It's simply uh, 1 over x. And of course, I'm only talking about uh, positive x values. So when you see the formula for the derivative of an inverse, the key behind understanding this is really thinking about what is happening with the original function. Uh, and you'll see this for inverse trigonometric functions. You'll see it work for the natural log. But of course, the idea is you find the point on the original function. You find out what that original function is. You find the derivative of the original function, which is usually a little bit easier. And you take the reciprocal of that derivative, and you're in business. All right. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit MySecretMathTutor.com.